in our in the foundations program, sometimes we talk about listen to the longings in your heart. Uh, let them be your teacher and let them carry you along. You had a longing for sanity, depth, happiness, honesty in relationships. Well, let's use that as a way into the topic territory then. Um, you know, this uh, courage pillar of well-being is about uh, working with the engine that or aspect of well-being that is relating applied to, in this case, our needs for safety. Or to put it a certain kind of way, how do we uh, go into deeper and deeper spaces in relationships while um, protecting ourselves in healthy and appropriate ways, while sticking up for our own needs in the face of outer challenges as well as inner challenges. So that's our context here. And to kind of enter into this material, you've begun to allude to it already in terms of your own personal history. Um, you know, can you say a little bit about what got you interested in from the beginning when you were a, a wee bar baron, as they say in Scotland, uh, where I was recently, uh, what got you interested in authentic, open, courageous communicating? And then how have you stayed interested in that? Why has it been important to you personally, you know, as you've moved in th into and through adulthood? Well, I wanted my inside and my outside to match. I wanted to be known for who I was. Uh, the big challenge was a lot of who I was or who I believed I was, I felt a lot of shame about. And so there was quite a, a conflict between wanting to be known, but you know, who exactly was it who was going to be known when that was revealed. So I really had to do a lot of work with coming to peace with the fact that I felt insecure, I had lots of doubts, I had lots of jealousies, fears, you know, you name it. And when I looked in the, in the world at large, I didn't see people talking about us particularly. I mean, it's actually part of what brought me into men's work and really looking at some of the, you know, the traditional male role and don't let you, don't let you see them sweat and don't reveal your vulnerabilities. Don't even have them. But if you have them, certainly don't talk about them. And yet uh, I was conflicted about this and I wanted to really challenge that. So that conflict within me led, led to kind of pushing through uh, a lot of the kind of blocks and obstacles that I experienced. And that, that really took me into talking about things with friends, with colleagues, with family members that were incredibly uncomfortable. And so, you know, I, I totally appreciate when you're speaking, Rick, about how do we feel safe as human beings when we're revealing things that feel difficult, indeed courageous to reveal. And, you know, I actually don't think there's any way to feel totally safe, you know, doing it. There's inherently, there's a conflict. And so the way I look at it is courage is a dynamic relationship between a vision about how you want to be, how you want your life to be on the one hand, and some experience of threat, you know, in revealing that on the other hand. That's how you if, talk, that's how you define courage, which yes. is good to clarify, yeah. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and so I, if, if there's something I want to express about myself, it's, and it's part of my vision, but I don't feel any level of threat in doing so, it's not necessarily courageous, you know, in expressing that. It's, it, it's fine to do that. I'm courage not, I'm is not, not a relevant, helpful factor. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, one should always be courage. That's the best thing to be. I'm simply saying that if, if your deepest yearning is to express your core values and you feel some level of threat in doing so, then it takes courage to express it. Yeah, but well you can said. express your core values without feeling threatened, and it's not necessarily courageous, and that's perfectly fine. Now... Uh, you know, in t so in terms of that, well, I oftentimes hear someone say to somebody else, like, are you comfortable saying that or doing that? And I, I find myself wincing, you know, when I hear that because I feel like comfortable, really. Like, is that... Well, you're from New Jersey, so, you know, there is a certain thing there. Uh, uh, that's true. Everyone from New Jersey is just uncomfortable. And that's just the... Well, you don't care about it, discomfort because yeah, you're exactly. tough as nails, right? That, that's, that's right, Rick. Let, let's just take it all the way south, you know, <laughs> so... So I tend to look at it more in terms of vision, you know, in terms of like, how important is this for me to communicate? And even if I feel some level of threat in doing so, am I willing to do so? How important is my, my value or my vision 
you know, to expressing. And I, I can tell you that over the many years that I've been practicing courageous communication, there have been times when I've been literally shaking in bringing something up, but it felt that important, you know, to express it. So I had to do it. And so even if enough... you're, even if you're not comfortable, um, you know, choosing truth over harmony, let's say. Absolutely. And it may be choose, choosing love over numbness, you know, that I, I know for me, I'm very capable of having my heart shut. If I'm feeling some level of discord with someone that hasn't been communicated, you know, my heart shuts and it may shut more than some people. See, some people may be more capable of keeping their heart open and having a, an experience of conflict you know, with a person that's been unnamed and unprocessed, but that's just not the nature of the beast that is me. So I have to follow my own nature with that. And because my value is to be in loving, connected relationships, it makes me more willing to express things that, that feel difficult to do. And they still feel difficult. You know, it's not like uh, I've mastered, you know, all this. I feel like I'm, I'm a student teacher, you know, in, in a certain way of this material. And so, you know, of the many people I work with, I'm constantly in these challenging contexts, you know, be they in organizational settings or be they in leading men's groups or working with couples. It's like how to kind of help people really develop their own inner resources, as you talk about, really feel to whatever degree possible safe versus threatened within themselves while at the same time being willing to express what's most important to them.